Well, good morning, everybody. If it's morning when you watch this, uh, I'm going to do an experiment today. Today we're going to be talking about uh, yellowed plastics. This has been a topic that's bothered a lot of video game collectors and stuff for a while. Um, let me just show you this for example. Uh, this is the back of a Nintendo 64 cartridge and you can see there is some yellowing mostly on the sides and the top. It's actually kind of strange how the back itself is fine but there's this like stripe of yellow like right here and on the top. And that came off of this game right here so I swapped the back a cover out so you can see this back looks fine but if you look closely though you can see that even the the front is slightly discolored slightly discolored but uh, but not as bad as the back was so um, so so why this happens is it is a chemical reaction from sunlight or UV rays and not only is the plastic discoloring, but it's also getting brittle and and just you know getting weaker. But this can be reversed, and that's where uh, retrobrite comes into play. There's a lot of recipes for retrobrite on the internet. The most common ones involve 12% um, of hydrogen peroxide and xanthan gum and oxyclean. Now most recipes uh, what you do is you mix the ingredients together and it basically forms like this kind of paste and then you paint it on or apply it uh, directly to the plastic that you are uh, trying to de-yellow and then you set it in the sun or under a black light for like several hours, maybe an overnight, and then that will reverse the reaction and the yellow will be at least better, or if you do it multiple times, it may even completely go away. So that's the idea. Uh, however, um, uh, you don't have to make the paste. Uh, you could just use hydrogen peroxide and oxyclean, and you just put those two ingredients together and you just put uh, like if you're done with a small piece of plastic like this or some uh, model toys or something you can just dunk them in the liquid and set them outside and, and that will still work um, you only need the xanthan gum to just make the paste it's basically just like a uh, the xanthan gum is used as a thickening agent and you can also substitute that for um, I've seen people use cornstarch, uh, but I don't have any of those ingredients. Uh, this, so this is going to be a very budget-friendly mixture of this. Uh, not that I can't afford those ingredients, but I just want to try to do this on my cheap just in case it doesn't work very well, or if it actually ends up damaging this uh, this cover. So, so what I have is just standard 3% hydrogen peroxide. Um, this is just the standard 3% that you can buy off the shelf. Um, this is not recommended because it's not very strong, but this should do something. Uh, they recommend at least 6 to 12%, which you can't just buy in stores. You either have to order that online, or some say you might be able to order that from hair salons, but I'm not going to try that. Um, and they also have 30% as well, but... Uh, that's uh, that's really strong stuff, so I'd be careful uh, with that. And yeah, so I'm going to use the standard three percent hydrogen peroxide just to see what this does with uh, with just standard ingredients that you can just buy off the shelf or stuff that you may already have just sitting around at home. And instead of OxyClean, I'm going to use this stuff. I found this at a Dollar Tree. And even though it's not called OxyClean, it should still work because it says oxygen. So, so as long as it's some kind of oxygen cleaner, 
and it's in like a powder, which this is, um, then it should work. And you can see here, this is just a white powder. And even though it doesn't have chlorine in it, it kind of has that like chlorine-like scent. Like it smells very clean. Like it smells like a chemical cleaner. So we're gonna mix these two together and see what we get. Okay, so I am going to wear some gloves for this. I mean, even though this is only this is only three percent, so it probably wouldn't hurt you too much, but I'm still going to be on the safe side. So I highly recommend you do gloves when you do this. So the first step is we're going to add eight ounces, uh, which is one cup or half pint of hydrogen peroxide. So that is eight ounces of it. So we will pour that in. There's that. And next, we add like a teaspoon of the OxyClean or any kind of oxygen cleaner. So, this is roughly a teaspoon, so we'll put that in. Now we're going to mix this up. And this might start reacting a little bit. If you watch it here, this might start reacting. The powder is just kind of like staying in there. Like I thought it would kind of like, like kind of like disappear or like turn into like a, um, start bubbling or something. But so far it's not, and that might just be because this is the uh, the three percent instead of the six or twelve percent. So I'm just trying to stir this up so that uh, so that it kind of gets uh, so that it kind of mixes into like the entire container because that's the idea here. Yeah, the powder is starting to disappear a little bit. So just try to mix this up as much as you can until you see not very much flakes left. And, uh, so far I don't see it bubbling or anything, but again this is only 3%. Alright. Okay, I think that's good enough. All right, so next, the next step is just to simply drop the cartridge cover inside. I'm gonna try to dip it in there so that it gets full coverage. There you go. So now it's completely submerged. And so now we are going to put it outside. Because I don't have a black light, so we have to do this in the sun. Okay, so it's been sitting out here in the sun for a little over two hours now, and you can see it actually has bubbled up quite a bit. And I think that's because the uh, the sun has warmed up the hydrogen peroxide, and it's really uh, dissolved uh, the oxygen cleaner. So far, it doesn't look like it's actually changed any of the coloring, but when I like move it around you can kind of see some of it maybe coming off a little bit you can see it clouding up there so be sure to see how this continues now for the record if this ends up like damaging this cover or fading the label I'm not really worried about that because I don't plan on using this cover this is really just for fun just to see what happens um, but you actually may want to like microwave um, the hydrogen peroxide before you pour it just to kind of get a head start on it um, that might help the powder dissolve a little better, maybe for like 20 seconds or so. But anyway, we'll come back after a little while and see how it's done. Okay, so it's been like another two hours. So these have had like direct sunlight for like four hours now. And it might be a little better actually. Um, you can obviously still see the discoloration, but it's possible after a few treatments of this, it, it might look pretty good. But you can see there the label there is starting to peel off a little bit, so don't be aware of that. 
But anyway, we'll leave it sit out here for like another hour or two, and then I'll probably bring it back inside. Okay, so I brought it back inside now. After sitting outside for roughly six hours, um, so it was sitting in direct sunlight for about four hours, and then for another two hours it was sitting in indirect sunlight. So, and these are the results after sitting outside for six hours, so we'll take it out of the solution here. And that actually does look quite a bit better. I'm actually surprised by this. It's not all the way gone, but this is after only one treatment. So I actually am really impressed with how this turned out. I really wasn't sure. Um, now there is a little bit of damage to the label. You can see the label here is kind of peeling off a little bit. But like I said, I wasn't really worried about that. So that's not a problem. Uh, now keep in mind, this is with only the 3% of hydrogen peroxide. This is just the standard 3%. So presumably, it would work even better with the 12% or even the 6%. So, and also this was only with just some, uh, just some uh, off-brand oxygen cleaner, not OxyClean, uh, though it's basically the same stuff probably. Um, just, uh, uh, just this oxygen base cleaner and 3% of hydrogen peroxide. Now, of course, your mileage on this may vary depending on what you're trying to de-yellow. Uh, so obviously, if you're trying to de-yellow like a console shell or something, that would require much more a peroxide and a bigger container as well, so that might get more expensive. At that point, you may as well just go with the, the pasting and painting option. But, uh, but if you're just cleaning off just really small plastics like this, or some like, um, uh, maybe some like, um, uh, some action figures or small toys, this, I recommend doing this. And this is after only one treatment, so if I did this again, it may even look better than this. Uh, now, I did take a snapshot of this before I started doing anything. So this is what the cartridge looked like right when I took it outside. And this is what it looked like afterwards, after sitting outside for six hours. And you can definitely see a difference. So I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm really happy with the results. So. I do recommend trying this out for yourself if you just have some small plastics to try to de-yellow. Uh, though, do be careful though. Be sure to definitely wear gloves and you know make sure to mix the ingredients the right way. Again, it's it's half pint or eight ounces of hydrogen peroxide and roughly one teaspoon of oxygen cleaner and. And hopefully you'll get similar results like this. So this was really fun to do. I'm really impressed with the results. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And I will see you next time.